everyone hear me in the back? All right, good. Uh, all right, so uh, this is my first CSM BMS meeting. So I'm actually, uh, I've been studied in the last couple of days and I learned a lot and I think everything, everything just amazing. Uh, so I'm grateful to have this opportunity to share my work on the uh, post-glacial landscape evolution. Uh, so my advisor, Alison Anders, has talked about the bigger picture problem uh, of this study yesterday. So I just, uh, I want to just remind some uh, key points here. Uh, so first of all, uh, Illinois and other parts of the Midwest, uh, Northern Midwest are flat, so very flat. Um, so I mean here uh, in Colorado, you have a uh, lot of mountains, uh, but I think one thing we can share in common in, in Illinois is just we can ski in Illinois. So I think this is probably the, this one is the, probably the steepest slope in Champaign-Urbana area. As you can see, it's still very flat. And this, uh, uh, this is Cecilia Collins back. So she's the person behind all the groundwater models Edison showed yesterday. All right, so a consequence of this uh, flat surface is that a large area uh, of the upland is uh, dominated by closed depressions that are not connected to the uh, fluvial drainage networks. So the reason we have uh, this is because the repeated glaciation of the Laurentide ice sheet basically disrupts all the pre-existing pre drainage networks and deposit a thick pile of glacier tails. Uh, then another thing that this glaciation did is during the deglaciation, the meltwater from the ice sheet can carve some deep valleys. Uh, so here, uh, so the, basically the two important components for post-glacial landscapes are first the meltwater valleys and second the load relief uplands. So here, uh, this is the DM of the upper Sangamon River in Illinois. Uh, you can see that the river valley here is about 30 meters deep. Then figure on the right, this is the soil drainage data of the, of the same area. Uh, dark blue means the soil is not is poorly drained. So as you can see, a lot of places on the uplands is very poorly drained. And the consequence of the poorly drained soil is that the, here, this is the area photo of the cornfields. A lot of the crops are dead here because there are too much water over there. So uh, Alison talked about how the water of the, or in the depressions can connect to the drainage network through groundwater. Uh, but here I want to explore another possibility. Uh, so how the water can route to the drainage network, network through the overland flow, so surface flow. Um, so let's think about two end member scenarios. So first, uh, uh, disconnect case. So in this one, we uh, assume all the closed depressions remain disconnected from the drainage networks. Uh, so as you can see, these three, drainage, uh, these three depressions are disconnected. Uh, then on the other end, we can uh, imagine that all the depressions are filled with water up to their uh, spillover point. So the, drainage, uh, the depressions are connected to the drainage networks all the time. So my question in this study, so I want to know whether the disconnect case versus connect case, they can give us a very different path uh, of the landscape evolution. So to do that, I uh, build a numerical model using the LandLab platform. Uh, so this is my model domain. The uh, evolution of the topography is dominated by a uh, fluvial uh, three power erosion law and the uh, linear diffuser for the hill slope process. Um, so my model domain uh, on the left boundary, this is an open boundary that represents Mountwood Valley and the elevation, uh, the depth of the valley is 40 meters deep. And the major part of the, uh, of the model domain is a flat surface with some random noise, uh, so representing the low relief upland. Then all the other three boundaries, the top, bottom, and red, are closed. So all the water can only flow out of the domain from, from the um, uh, left boundary, so the Meltwater Valley. So uh, that's how we, how we calculate the topography, but how do we differentiate the uh, disconnect case versus connected case? So uh, for the disconnect case, I use the standard D8 algorithm in LAN labs. I use the flow router module. Uh, so the flow direction is determined by the uh, direction of the steepest uh, down slope. Uh, then it, so uh, in this way, all the closed depressions will remain disconnected from the drainage network. So then for the connected case, I implemented two additional modules in land lab. The first is pit filler that can fill all the depressions up to the spillover points. So you can imagine that this algorithm will flood the, all the, uh, the whole domain inward from the, uh, from the meltwater valley, from the open boundaries. Then this algorithm uses a priority queue to guarantee that all the uh, depressions is filled up to their spillover point. 
Uh, then again, I uh, implement another algorithm that described by Barnes et al. Uh, this is a flow router over flat surface. So this algorithm will calculate a gradient away uh, from the higher edges of the depressions and also a gradient towards the lower edges. So by uh, adding these two gradients, you can have a convergent flow field. So this paper, Barnes et al. actually uh, have a detailed proof, meant, a proof why, this, uh, why this algorithm works. So I just uh, skipped that part in this talk. Uh, so I want to mention uh, one thing here is that these two modules actually uh, don't change the topography. Uh, they actually create an additional mask that only used to determine the flow direction. Uh, so the, uh, the topography, the, the depressions is still depressions in the module. Uh, then uh, another thing I want to mention that these two algorithms actually equivalent to the depression finder and the router module in LANLAB. Uh, the reason I have to implement these two algorithms is that when I start to work on this project, this module is still in development, uh, so I can use that. Uh, yeah. All right, so now, now let's look at some uh, redounds. So first, this is the model topography after 50,000 years evolution. So I presenting four cases here. So the C, C case, C base, C soft, and connected, uh, and the, sorry, and C hard, are connected case, so rep C represent connected. And the D base here is disconnected case. Hard, soft, and base just representing the different irritability coefficient in the stream power urinal. Uh, so as we can see in this figure, so first, the disconnect case, you basically cannot see any channels. The channels are very short, just uh, I think 100 meters long here. Uh, so most of the upline still remain, remain unchanged after 50,000 years evolution. But for the connected case, as you can see, there are several long channels have cut into the uplands. Uh, even if, even though the, for this C hard case, the irritability is, ten, is one order of magnitude lower than the uh, disconnect case. You can still have some longer channels than the disconnect case. Uh, so, uh, uh, so a very basic uh, uh, finding from this uh, data is that the hydraulic connection, so the disconnected versus connected can have a huge impact on the uh, landscapes. But we, we want to quantify this stuff by calculating this percent integrated. Uh, so this is the percent of the domain that is uh, connected through a downslope uh, path to the pre-existing meltwater valley. So the, uh, even though in the connected case, I force all the um, water in the depressions connected to the drainage network valley, but when I calculate the person integrated, I still use the D8 algorithm. The, the closed depressions is not considered integrated. All right, so that's a person integrated. So the increase in person integrated is basically equivalent to the uh, decrease of NCA. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the NCA. NCA representing the non-contributing area. Uh, so that means the, uh, the water in, uh, in the depressions are usually considered not contributing to the fluvial networks. Although in this model, I'm, uh, exploring whether the non-contributing area is non-contributing. Uh, all right, so let's look at the, how the uh, person integrated, integrated evolves over time. So in this figure, I plot the person integrated uh, as a function of time. Uh, the green line here is the disconnected case. And then all the three black lines are the connected case with different irritability. So as you can see, all the three, uh, all the four cases predicted the increase of the increase of integration. So the non-contributing area becomes integrated over time. Well, that's not uh, so surprising. Uh, but what's the difference here is that the rate of the evolution. So the disconnect, in the disconnect case, the integration happens in a much slower rate, especially if we want to, if we want to compare this uh, disconnect case with the C hard case. So the irritability in this case is one order of magnitude lower than the disconnect case we still have higher integration rates um, compared to the disconnected case. So for the integration, uh, the hydrological, hydrological connection is a primary control on the integration. And the other thing in this uh, lower panel, I'm plotting the, how the, the net erosion, uh, how, how net erosion evolves as a function of the person integrated. So the, uh, in this figure, the x axis here is now person, integra person integrated, not the time. So a very interesting finding in this figure is that um, if we want to have the same degree of integration, let's say 10%, uh, 
the disconnect case, this green line actually requires more erosion. So that all the connect case uh, need less amount of erosion compared to the disconnect case to achieve the same amount amount of integrated integration. So I think that's a very interesting finding. Uh, so uh, how uh, so they have different amount of error and how does that reflect in the landscape? So in this slide, in this figure, I'm plotting the model the landscape when 15% of the model of the model domain is integrated. Uh, so well, let's go back to a couple of slides. So you can see, as you can see, for the connected case, even after 200,000 years, integration percent the person integrated is still less than 10%. So it actually takes over fifty thousand, uh, over five hundred thousand years, for the uh, disconnect case uh, to get this fifteen percent integrated. Uh, so as you can see, there's a big the big difference between the between them. So for the connected case, uh, we have several long channels that cut into the uh, domain, but for the disconnect case, uh, there are many there are more channels compared to the connect case, but most of them are very short. So then I also plot the uh, histogram of the channel length. Uh, so again, as you can see in the disconnect case, this one, in the disconnect case, most of the channels are shorter than one kilometer. But for in the connected case, we have some long channels that over that even uh, I think almost 400, uh, four kilometers or five kilometers. All right, so that's all my model results. Uh, then next, we want to compare this results with some real landscapes. Uh, this is the Upper Sangamon River Basin in Illinois. Um, we uh, identified uh, some channels in this basin and plot the uh, histogram of the channel length. So this is the histogram. In this figure, the blue color is the channels from this bigger box here. Then the orange colors are uh, the channel length from this smaller. Oh, I can't even see that. This one, yes, the smaller box. So the size of this smaller box is uh, roughly the same as my model domain, so five kilometer by five kilometer. So as you can see in the channel in this histogram, we have some short channels, but we also have several long channels. That's very similar to what the disconnect case, what the connected connected case predicted. So now let's just uh, have a direct comparison between them. So as you can see, the in the disconnect case, uh, we have we don't have long channels, but in the connect case, we have some channels. So the figure on the uh, on the left, the real landscapes is more similar to the connect case than the disconnect case. Then the other thing I want to point out here is that uh, I said earlier, uh, uh, the disconnect case requires over five hundred thousand years to get fifteen percent of the model domain integrated. Uh, but for the connected case, uh, the time usually, I think it's just, a, I think the time uh, request on order is on order of tens of thousand years. Uh, this time scale is actually similar to the time since the deglaciation in uh, in Noi area. So uh, the last time uh, the long, long, tide, long tide ice sheet covered the uh, northern part of Illinois was about uh, 20 to 25,000 years ago. So the time scale also suggests that so this con the connect case might be a possible uh, scenario here. Okay, so uh, then that's all my model results. So in conclusion, I have uh, kind of three bigger or three big uh, findings in my research. In my research, so first, uh, my model results suggest that the connected case can have faster and uh, uh, the faster rates of erosion and integration, and also the morphology different. The channels are longer and more sinuous. Uh, then second is that the connect case requires uh, less uh, amount of erosion to, accom to accomplish the same degree of integration compared to the disconnect case. And the third point is that a simple comparison with the Upper Sangamon River Basin in Illinois suggests that the hydraulic connection between the depressions and the uh, melt water valleys could have uh, had a, big, a, a very important impact on the landscape evolution. Uh, all right, so that's all my talk. So I have my contact information over here. If you want to use uh, the, my module instead of the depression fund and router in Land Lab, you can contact me and uh, it's on my GitHub page. All right, so that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Jing Tao. And yay for open source. Questions for Jing Tao? <laughs>
Yeah, so the question was, uh, the model results suggest that uh, uh, in the real landscapes, the channels looks like more, uh, looks more like the connected case, but if you run the flow over the real landscapes, whether the channel would be connected. So the answer, I think, is no. I think yesterday, uh, Carrie, oh, so uh, she had a post that shows how I uh, used basically the same DM I used in this data to show, uh, to try to rot flow over the landscape. Uh, yeah, basically, I think her results show that, show that they're not connected. Oh, uh, yeah, so the question was, do I have a potential, uh, sorry, did you say ex explanation or experiment? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, yes. Actually, actually, the uh, the talk Alison gave yesterday is talking about how the groundwater may be a c connection between the closed depressions and the meltwater valleys, and that work is still uh, going on. I think uh, uh, because I'm I'm not currently involved in this project anymore. I'm moving to glacial landscape evolution, so I I don't know whether they have a, a plan to move this part forward. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, Alison can answer that question better than me. Sorry. <laughs> 